Hi everyone, and welcome back to my series on how to make an action RPG in Godot 4. This episode is the first of two where we will add health to our player and create our first GUI items. And now, let's get started. Let's first add some health to the player. Go to the player script and add a variable called current health. I'm also specifying that this should be an integer and then let's set this to 3 for now. Now let's go decrease this new health variable whenever the player is colliding with the hitbox. So we go down to the onHurtbox area intact function and let's first remove this print function here. Then we decrease the current health by 1. And let's also print the current health here so it's easier for us to see if this is working. And now let's go test the game. In the output window we can now see that the health is decreased whenever a slime's hitbox is entering the player's hurtbox. And it also continues below zero. Normally the player would die here and maybe be teleported away or something, but we will cover this in another episode. For now, let's make the player regain full health if it's hit when it has zero health. To do this, we first need to add a new variable that stores the player's maximum health. I'm making this an exported variable to make it easier to change and test later on. I also add the unready tag to the current health variable from before and set it to equal the maximum health. Now we scroll back to where we decrease the current health and add some extra code. If the current health is less than zero, then we set current health to be the maximum health. And now we then test the game again to see that everything is working as expected. And it is. Okay, now let's get some hearts on the screen to visualize the health. For this, we need two new scenes. First, let's create one that has a hbox container as the root node. This container will automatically sort its children in a horizontal row and I think this will work for our player's hearts. Let's rename this to hearts container and save the scene. Next, we create a scene for the individual hearts. This time, the root node should be a panel. And we also need a sprite node to visualize the heart. Now let's add the hearts sprite sheet found in the hut folder. And add it to our new sprite and set the age frames property correctly. We also disable the centered property of the sprite. Now, if we click on the panel node here, we can see that it currently gives our heart this transparent gray background that we don't really want. So to remove this, we go to the panel's visibility property, click on the self-modulate color, and set the alpha value to zero. Please note that it's important that we set the value in the self-modulate color and not just the modulate color. This makes sure that only the panel is affected and not its children. We don't want our sprite to disappear. We also need to set the minimum size of the panel. This will make it easier to position it correctly in the GUI later on. So I click and drag the panel size until it fits around the heart sprite. And now I can see that I also need to move the sprite a bit up to make it easier to resize the panel correctly. When we are done resizing the panel, we can then set the minimum size correctly by going to layout and then transform to see the size we just set. And then we can copy these values to the custom minimum size property. 
Finally, I'm renaming the root node hard GUI and saving the scene. Okay, now that we've created the base for our hard GUI, let's go back to the hard container scene. Now it's time to look at how this hbox container works. Let's start by locating the hard GUI scene in the file system menu, and then click and drag it into the container scene. I then duplicate the heart by clicking on it and pressing Ctrl and D at the same time. And I add two new hearts this way. Notice how the hearts are automatically arranged in a horizontal row with even spacing between them. This is what the HBox container is for. If you want the spacing to be less or more, you can click on the HBox container node and go to the themes override properties and enable the separation constant. And now you can set it to whatever you prefer. For now, I'll set this to 2. The last thing we will be doing in this episode is adding the hearts to our game screen. In the next episode, we will then look at how we can update the GUI hearts. Okay, so now we go to our world scene and add a canvas layer to it. We need this canvas layer node to draw our hearts on top of everything else and to make it stay put even when the camera moves. We then locate the hearts container scene in the file system menu and then click and drag it in as a child of the canvas layer. When we test the game now, we can see that the hearts are drawn on top of everything else and they also stay in the screen even if the camera moves. The hearts are currently located in the top left of the screen, but we can easily change this by selecting the container and then going to Layout and change the Anchor preset. Try experimenting with this a bit. But for now, I'll set this to top right. Okay, that's all for now. In the next episode, we will create a script to update the hearts. I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye!